Hi guys, uh, hope you're all keeping well. <coughs> Still in lockdown over here. Um, had a lot of snow as well the last few days, but it's clearing away now. But this morning I've got um, a package turn up. Um, postman delivered this today, and uh, I think you probably guess what it is. It's from Toy and Engines. I haven't opened it yet. I've been working on my truck and other things, but I thought I'd do kind of an um unwrapping video, unboxing video, whatever you want to call it, uh, and see what we've got inside. Uh, the reason it's got a little hump bit on the top here is because they've sent me the radiator, and I believe they've made a new 4 into one starter, which will be nice if it does away with all, you know, having to have four igniters, so... Shall we? Now, I don't want to... I remember once opening a body shell like this, and the guy packed it with the roof right to the top and I put the razor blade down it and yeah you've guessed it I kind of damaged the, the body shell but it wasn't too bad but well there's the first box that's on top hopefully and if you're into these engines you've probably seen uh, a lot of videos Dennis is making a drift car it looks pretty cool um, Johnny Cole done a uh, Johnny Q done a, a build on it, um, and I'd imagine that tanks RC twenty four seven tanks and whatever that is will be doing one as well. So it's what's it saying the box? It's a quite a big box to what I'm used to, um, but yeah, nice box. I mean, when I got my twin, I actually put it in the same box as a single, so it was kind of a, a bit of a squeeze in there, but well, that's the one we've got there. Now, should we see what's in here? Because I've got, hoping for big things with this box. This, if it is a new igniter, that's what we've really been looking for. Because everything was too big. Um, oh well. Maybe the igniters, maybe the igniters in the other box, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I've got the, uh, the radiator. I mean, that's a nice little unit, really. I can see through it. It's quite, uh, well, quite nice, really. A nice little radiator. I've got a in, large inlet and outlet pipe, but I guess that's what it is. And I've got a a little bag of screws. Uh, don't really know what they're for, but I guess I'll find out. Big shoulders on, so let's have a look in this box and see what I've got in here. Got a nice, nice foam lid as I do in all their models. Now, I know, I think I've got to go online and download the English instructions for this. Because it's, uh, I think it's all in Chinese. The uh, So Dennis, Dennis Dempsey said to me that it was in Chinese. So we've got an exploded view of the engine there. You've got to build it yourself. Um, it looks quite nice. Should be quite interesting. Uh, we've got a little toolkit, a few spanners and stuff like that, Allen keys. We've got a gasket set, as so. And what have we got in the rest of the box? I believe you build this in stages as looks quite nice presented in there as you can see it's kind of quite a few bits there we've got a camshaft where are you we've got a camshaft down here uh, it's got seals on the end which is a really good thing um, apparently the carburetors are supposed to be a different type of carburetor but they look very similar to me and there's the needles at the top you've got your low range and your high range needles um, these look very, very similar to the others, to be honest with you. 
We've got the um, the carb opening bracket there, which works on four carburetors. Now, this is the sort of thing you don't really want to drop on the floor, isn't it? So we put that one over there. And what have we got in this box? We've got the power boost uh, box. Whether I'll be using that, I don't know. Might look nicely, four pipes coming out. We've got the four pistons. Now, I know you've got to match these. I believe the rings, you've got to match the rings to the pistons or something like that, I was reading. They've got to be matched. And at last, they've got proper... You see in the bottom there, they've got proper bronze bushings in there, bearings. So it should be a really strong engine. You know, it's beautifully made. We've got all the little rockers up the top there. Um, yeah, little tappets. It's always strange on this engine because you can't adjust the valve clearances. So I don't know, you know, if it wears or whatever. I mean, my, a couple of my single-cylinder ones, they've started quite sloppy. They run OK, but I was just wondering why Toyan don't make like adjustable tappets, you know. So I guess all these are in number and they've all been ground to suit, you know, each part. So as I say, I've got to look that up in my uh, on my uh, iPad and try and download it. Right, let's go to the next next lot. Oh, this is a bit a little bit scary taking these out of here because I've not done this before. So you're the first ones that are seeing it. I mean, it's really beautifully done, like the old Tamiya kits. You know, when everything used to be a nice little blister packs. Beautifully, absolutely beautiful. You can't knock it. Okay, so what have we got in this section? Now these look like screws. Um, whether we have to use any thread lock on this, I don't know. It looks like we've got a starter motor bracket. Uh, just get that shine off of there. Yep, these are screws. There's little parts in there. Uh, some nipples for the water cooling. A couple of gaskets. Carburetor gaskets. Uh, washers. Parts for the water pump, I think. Got two types of grease there. Nothing in that one. I hope nothing's missing out of there. That's the starter motor bracket there. Hopefully, I mean, it's... It's a brush starter motor. I don't know why it is, but it's a brush starter motor. Maybe, you know, it gives a bit more torque at that sort of starting point, because you know sometimes brushless motors tend to cog a little bit um, before they go, but there's got to be a reason why they've used a brush motor. I don't know, but that's the little package of bits and bobs. Right. There's a nice machine in there. Looks like we've got the starter belt, we've got the cam belt, we've got the flywheel. Uh, I normally lighten the flywheel, cut it down. Uh, we've got the starter belt, yep. Uh, they look like the engine casings. Let's take this out and have a look. Right, the engine block stayed in there. So that, I would imagine that is a sump. Um, beautiful machining, absolutely lovely. Right, there's the brush motor for the starter. Um, we've got the sender head there, work of art, don't you think? And look at the crankshaft, absolutely fantastic work. I'll see if I can get this out without dropping it on the floor. Right. I can see now that the rings are actually... I don't know if you can see that. The rings are actually in the ball. And... I believe those rings... Hopefully they are the rings. 
I know you have to match them. Got to leave them with that. Wherever they are now, they've got to stay in there. So you've got to match that ring to that cylinder. I'm hoping they are the rings. Yeah. So they've got to stay in there. But look at the craftsmanship in this. It's not as big as I thought it to be, actually, you know, to be honest with you. That's where the water pump goes. There's a gear-driven water pump. Really nice. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. We'll put that over there for the time being. So, let's have a look at the starter motor and the cylinder head. This is the cylinder head. I mean, you know, it's superb, absolutely superb. Um, got the valves in it. A lovely thing to build, but I won't be doing it for a little while because I've got so many other things I'm working on. But you know, it can wait. Lovely bit of kit. Look at that crankshaft. Two up, two down. Bearings on the end. Seal on the end, which is nice. Toyed engines always sort of leak a little bit. But it's a young company and they're just starting out and these engines are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Superb. Uh, Right, we'll have a look at the starter motor. Uh, I didn't expect that. Well, I did, because I've seen plenty of don't see when you get on this one that it had a uh, brush motor. That's quite a big old motor, that. Um, what's it got written on it? 12 volt. I think it says 12 volt. Wrapped in a carbony looking sticker. But, um, you know, I think that'd be adequate. So, let's put these bits back in here. Uh, I think this could be. Oh, this is the end of the. what goes in the end of the crankshaft. The seal in it. This is what I like to see, the seals. You know, Tyne have come a long way from the first engines. My first little single cylinder engine, you know, it, I had a lot of trouble with it uh, running. Not, it was kind of in a crawler, so it was sort of over revving a little bit, it was very low geared. But I had a problem with the big end bearings that actually broke up. They, they was using tiny little ball races, but I've, um, changed your mind to uh, bronze bearings. Uh, and it's lovely to see that Toyota now have actually gone to bronze bearings and they've got a two-piece uh, Comrod. Um, you know, there's no torque wrench, torque wrench settings for this motor, which is a little bit, you know, I suppose you've just got to do it by feel and hope for the best. Um, yeah, so they made like a proper two-piece Conroy with a cup at the bottom with the, the big end bearing in, you know, it's, it's just so nice to see. I'm not saying that I actually had a hand in that, but I did sort of keep mowing them and saying, like, you need to make the bronze bearing for the big ends because the little, I mean, it sounds very good to have ball bearings in the crank, but they're just in the uh, Conroy, but it, they weren't strong enough, they were so small. So they've gone over now to bronze, which is, you know, nice. I mean, the machining on this is uh, incredible, absolutely incredible. So we'll put that back in the box. And this, um, I mean, this weighs nothing. This is a sump. Uh, this thing's got a toy on. I mean, this come from Sterling Engines. Um, I've also worked with um, Engine DIY with a guy, Lucas. 
I'm a bit disappointed they've not sent me the uh, igniters. Um, I'll get onto them again and, uh, you know, they were sort of a little bit hard to deal with at times. You know, they sort of talk to you in broken English and stuff, you know. I still haven't got the belt for my other twin cylinder. I've actually bought one in the UK and I've actually, I couldn't get the right number of teeth. I was sort of one out either way, but... I've managed to put a little plate under the starter and, and sort of like tightened it up. So, you know, it, I can actually start the thing now, but I've been working all day, sorting the lights out on it. So, this is basically the engine. This is nice, they've actually drilled this one out to make it, this is the starter pulley, got nice bearings in there. And it runs, you have a little roll pin that goes in there. There's a little pin that goes in there. Instead of like a keyway that pushes on. We've got, I always think these are a bit too heavy, you know. I mean, my uh, six wheeler truck, I've actually got, I've done away with this one and I've made an alley one up, you know. I don't have any problems with it at all. It ticks over lovely and everything. So, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to pull it in yet. Uh, I suppose you get a nice idle with a, um, you know, uh, a heavy flywheel such as this, you know. Um, it's screw on. No, it's on a nice taper at last. I used to screw on, that's on a nice taper, that's, that's a good thing. I've got two belts here. I hope I don't have any problems with these because I think we're having trouble getting belts. Uh, sent me two wrong ones for my other engine. Um, it kind of, I just worry a bit about their after sale service, you know, because I ordered them sort of before Christmas and all I've got is two wrong ones. Uh, they've asked me to take pictures of it and I've sent it back. But in the meantime, I've managed to sort the problem out myself. But, you know, it just would be nice if they was to sort of say to you, okay, you know, we'll send you, um, you know, the right size belt, whatever. It just makes me wonder who's actually in charge sometimes. But saying that, you know, these engines are a good price. Um, uh, we kind of do most of the advertising, I, I guess, on YouTube. Um, you know, I've been doing their videos for a while. Um, you know, you can't fault the quality of that. Uh, quite a nice little setup. Not like the other little ones we had, they were actually tiny. That goes in quite a nice big bore, but I do like four pipes sticking out the side, so whether I will use this or not, I don't know. But again, they've come a long way in their uh, exhaust setup. I'll just see if I get a little piston out of here. Now this is what I was saying to you. See, they've got bronze bearings in the bottom. Got two, look like two millimetre screws. Could be smaller. They are. So we actually got a cup, and I should imagine they're matched as well. So we've got to keep all them as they are. And I'll give you a little tool uh, to put the pistons in so you can actually use this tool which squashes the rings down and you push it into the top of the board so it's very handy that um, let's have a look at the rockers <laughs> I'm really scared of dropping one of these because I don't think I'd ever find it again now these are very hard very similar to all towing engines uh, they're very good, very well made, hard and nice. I've uh, never had a problem with them, don't seem to wear. Um, it's a shame, you know, they've got the same sort of thing with the grease at the top of the uh, camshaft. Um, you know, they give you that red grease, which is this little pot, where are you? This little pot of red grease. I mean, that's that's all you get, you know. And a couple of runs, and you'll use that. Um, just put this over the rockers, 
camshaft and stuff like that. And I was thinking of, you know, they've actually now got the seals in the camshaft, so whether anyone will ever go up here and put the oil feed up there and, you know, and see how that that, run, that runs. We, uh, a lot of guys have tried it, and I was going to try it on my other engines, but because um, it's so... It's just plain bearings on the crankshaft, and, you know, they're not... They leak. Even if you put too much grease in it, you know, which I found out to start with, I've sort of... I've learnt a lot with these engines now, how to keep them, you know, uh, clean and... I've had most of them part to see how they work and stuff like that, and I've made like little improvements, um, not a lot, mainly exhaust setups and stuff like that, um, bearings, big end bearings I've done, but my L uh, two hundred, my twin cylinder, I haven't done anything to that. I've just I put it in the car, and I'm experimenting with the gearing. Um, if you've seen my other videos, uh, it all looks very nice sitting in there. And I've gone down three times on the gear ratio. But I've not had a chance to try it because we're in lockdown and now it's snowed. Um, I've had the body painted and at last I got it back. Uh, it's all done in two packs, so it'll be fuel proof. Um, I should have bought it out, it really looks really nice. Uh, but I've had trouble putting the lights in today. Uh, the last two days fitting the lights. Um, I kind of... I bought a, a little light unit, I mean, supposed to have three channels, but only two of them work, so I've had to get everything working off of those two channels, mixing and changing, and you know, because I've got, whoops, I've got one receiver in the body shell, and I've got one receiver in the car, so you can take the body off uh, and leave the receiver in the car, and receiver works in the body shell, it works all the lights and everything like that, so I've got indicators, brake lights, reversing lights, uh, running lights on the side and obviously headlights um there's my heater come on uh yeah so anyway back to this engine i think we'll like i say the carburetors to me they were supposed to be like a new design but they're actually not um i don't think they are looking at them i don't think they are um but you know had a lot of trouble tuning the four cylinder one, uh, not the four cylinder, the twin cylinder. Um, but I think I've got it right now. Um, I just need to actually get out and get a chance to run it. I might have to gear it down even even lower. I think I will because it's so fast, you know. Um, but I put a, I bought some uh, old man emu shocks and put on the front, uh, <laughs> saving up to get the back ones because they're expensive. You know, you're talking like 80 quid for four shocks. Um, and, I, you know, I've got so many other things to do. I've got the Aprilia. Um, I'm sanding all the bodywork down myself, prepping all the bodywork, because the guy wanted so much money. I think I told you that in the last video. Um, so I'm prepping it myself. So guy wants me to take it right back to raw plastic, which I'm doing. You know, I'm sanding light for hours and hours. Um, and I'm just waiting for... Um, a new front mud guard's come. Uh, well, it's not new, second hand. I've got to give that a skim up. Um, and I went for some new um, sanding pads because I've only got, like, sort of medium and cool, so I need some fine ones just to go over the plastic and sort of polish it up. But um, it's, they're fairly sound, you know. Um, I'm looking around for my decals now. I'm not sure what sort of colour scheme to do. Uh, but I've got that going. Um, I've got my helicopter, the, the R22, the Robbie, is nearly ready to go. Uh, I've been working on that the last few days. Let's just dig this camshaft out. Uh, it's got quite a lot of lift on that, hasn't it? That's quite an aggressive kind of cam, that is. I wonder if you get any whip on that. What's it supported? How many bearings have we got? Oh! Yeah, that's supported well. I think if I get the head out. Well, that's going to go in there. Just that head is amazing, isn't it? Beautiful thing. So, let's put this back in the box. Uh, I 
as usual, got a beautiful rocker box cover. There's a gasket that goes under there, I hope we don't leak. Uh, beautiful anodized pulleys, you know, they're just so trick. Absolutely lovely. Uh, don't lose any of these need needles, excuse me. Shall we have a look, see what's in this box? Now, I don't want to throw these all over the floor either, which I'm prone to doing. Um, I've been having a bit of a bad spell with kind of <laughs> dropping everything and, uh, you know, losing stuff. But, uh, I mean, I can't tip this up because they're going to come out. But most of these are carburetor parts. You know, they do well. They insulate the carburetors from the blocks for the heat. But this is my first water-cooled engine. So... I'm hoping I don't have that problem, you know, because our engines uh, did suffer a little bit of overheating. Uh, you had to run them fairly rich, but, you know, once they run in, you know, when you first get them, like, it's very hard to keep them running and stuff like that. But if you run them a, a lot, like I used to run my truck a lot, um, the black one, uh, they run in and they actually get better and better. And it's, uh, a, you know, it never gets old. That that black truck of mine with its two-speed gearbox, um, you know, is absolutely... A fantastic thing. I never, I never get bored driving it around. You know what we do, reversing lights on it and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's really nice. Let's see what we got in here. God. <laughs> um, oh dear. Don't, don't drop it. Right. We got fan blades in there. We've got parts for the water pump. Uh, we got the screws. Uh, I'll clean all them screws off. They've probably got some oil on them. But yeah, not a lot in there, really. Uh, just got to get those instructions. And like I say, what a beautiful radiator that is, you know. Now, no doubt I'm going to get everyone asking me what I'm going to put this in. Um, I haven't a clue yet. I had a couple of ideas, but I was sort of waiting until I got the the block so I could see you know, dimension-wise of it, and it's not as big as I actually thought it was. Um, yeah. Uh, I've been looking at the... I don't know if you've seen a company called... Uh, I think it's called Rock Hobby. They do uh, a 16th... Uh, one six, sorry. Uh, Wild Willis Jeep. Um, it's uh, quite a big-scale Jeep. Um very scale-like. The only thing I didn't like about it, it hasn't got leaf springs on it. It's got, like, independent suspension on it. Um, but I guess it probably handled nice. Excuse me. So, I've been looking at that because it's got a lot of room in the bonnet and stuff like that. The only thing put me off, I mean, it's £350, I think, the cheapest I've seen it. And what am I going to do? I'm going to throw most of it away. <laughs> I mean, I bought the uh, the clone 407, was it? Uh, and I threw most of that away. You know, you end up with a chassis and the body. Um, it's a shame you can't just get it, the rolling chassis without the electrics and everything like that, but no one's going to do that. So maybe I could sell on the, the, you know, the parts for it. But I've seen one with... They put, some guys are putting action men in, in there, but I've seen a, a really... Really nice one with um, like a normal sort of guy driving it with a, like, a little goatee beard and stuff like that, sunglasses. Uh, and the steering wheel actually moves. So if you get the hands on the steering wheel, um, and this guy actually made the head swivel as well. It's on YouTube if you want to have a look. Um, it's a bit like the old Kosho go-karts where the you know, hands used to move uh, on the steering wheel and the head used to move. It's not hard to do, but that looked really lifelike, you know. Um, so that could be on the cards. I was also uh, looking at some of the old Kyo show. You know the Mad Force, Ape Scale Mad Force, um, with two plate. You know that will be an easy, probably quite an easy build to do. Now, again, a few years ago you couldn't give them away. I mean, I had two of them, and they they don't handle well or nothing like that. Uh, overpowered for their size, but. Anyway, a good sort of solid truck. Um, but uh, I was talking to some, I think it was Kyosho 
spares or, or some guy like that on it, eBay. And he, he was saying to me that they've actually, since then, they've made a, a similar kind of truck, but they've made it um, a little bit longer, a little bit more refined. So, you know, that'd be another thing. But like I was saying, Madfall's truck seems to have disappeared, you know. You used to get them cheap without an engine and, you know, because the big thing with them is they've got a, a three-speed gearbox, which will be, you know, beautiful. You could play with the ratios on that uh, and run a three-speed box. And the engine sits up and it goes into a gearbox and it goes down by chain to a transfer box for the, t you know, two drive shafts. Uh, solid axle truck. Um, but, you know, that would probably be a, a, sort of a cheaper way of doing it. Um, you know, I don't know. It, uh, you know, I like the look of the truck as well, but I'm just wondering whether this engine is kind of, what's the word? It looks too kind of s sort of sporty, you know, with all this stuff. Like I say, Dennis Dempsey, the other guy who builds the trucks and cars, He's sort of making, I think it's a rear-wheel drive, like drift car, because that's what the engine looks like. Um, I'm just wondering in the Wild Willys truck <laughs> whether, you know, I don't really want to spray it all green, you know, how they they were, but um, maybe maybe it might look all right in there. I, I don't know, but it'd be a hell of a lot of room, you know, to put all the electrics in. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. And the Mad Force as well, there is a lot of room in that. I mean, all my tie on trucks have all been temp and it's getting to a stage where it's hard to squeeze all the servos in all the electrics and try and make it look neat and tidy you know um i've never had the luxury of having you know a big engine like this uh to go in a eight which you know it'd give you a colossal amount of room you've bad wide it up really nice and tidy you know but uh yeah i'm sort of pleased with it i'm going to build it when i can uh, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get the uh, starter kit with it, um, which they said they was going to put in. But no doubt it might come along. I'll give them a, shoot them a mail and see what they come up with. I mean, the, the engine, I think it was, they retail, I think it's seven, seven eighty dollars or something like that. Um, but they give you like a coupon to get a bit off and, you know, whatever. Um, but they was going to well, put the the, uh, the red in for me, but they was going to uh, put me in a star as well, so I can't sort of redo really much because I haven't got the starter, so I'll get on to them and, and see where we go. Anyway, guys, enough waffling. Um, I've got to finish off my helicopter and my truck before I start this project. I uh, hope you like the video. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, uh, this engine. Um, and I've seen a couple of them running and they sound really crisp and really sweet. So I'm expecting big things of this engine. So um, keep following my channel and subscribe if you want to. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, I just like building these cars and, you know, hopefully some of you guys out there might have a go and these videos might help you. I don't know. But, um, you know, I've had a few guys ask me where they come from and stuff like that. But they're from uh, Sterling Engines. You can look them up on the net. Um, I'll put a link down below. And also, Engine DIY has um, been very helpful in the past. And I'll put that link down as well. So, um, I'm going to wrap it up now, guys. Look after yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.